Good afternoon. Uh, I guess we'll get started. Our next speaker is Chris Sievers from eBay, and I'll turn it over to him. Uh, okay. Thanks. Uh, since there's only like three of you, if you just want to come up here, we could just huddle around my uh, tablet. And uh, no, <laughs> we could go get a beer. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> um, I guess we'll uh, we'll just get going. Uh, so yeah, I'm Chris. I'm at eBay. Um, just a little bit about you. I, I think actually all of you know me though. So, um, but anyway, I, I wear a whole bunch of hats. Um, I, I kind of like data scientists for you know some definition of data scientists. Um, I, I hope to be an engineer. Uh, I think I've, I'm a decent applied researcher and I'm a pretty good mathematician. Um, that's kind of my background. Uh, so I've been using H2O for a little while. Uh, I, I bumped into it the first time. Um, close to this time last year at a meetup at Netflix, uh, and I uh, asked Sri why I couldn't run it on 1,000 nodes, um, and I, I kind of learned that I don't really want to run it on 1,000 nodes uh, later on, but um, it, it sort of turned into a nice thing after that. Um, I like to hack on stuff, so I, I've kind of poked some things into there when I could, um, and I think Arno rewrote them, which is good. Um, if you want to shout at me on Twitter, there's me, and uh, LinkedIn. So. Um, Without even like telling you what this thing is, let me let me tell you why it exists, um, and there, it kind of boils down to two reasons. So I have bounced around a lot of teams inside uh, eBay and academia and stuff like this. And, and there's one thing that I, I've you know kind of the first rule I've really learned, which is that the teams that have the really good hardware they don't want to share it with you, right? Like, and it's this kind of situation. Like, and, and then you you go and run and and you know and then they tell you like you know you're using up like you know, 500% CPU, and you're like, yeah, but y you got 32 cores, and they're like, yeah, but that's, you know, maybe we want to use that. <laughs> and you go, well, you're not using it now, and they go, yeah, but it's our machine. So um, I, I kind of got frustrated with that, um, and, you know, I, I'm sure like most places, uh, you know, eBay, the distribution of hardware is uh, not uniform, uh, and there are people who should be doing things that they just can't because they don't have the hardware. Um, so the other really kind of rule that I've learned uh, is that, you know, you have these great uh, people like data scientists and researchers and stuff like this. They're really bad at configuring things and, and sort of setting stuff up. So, you know, I, I go into a machine and, and they've got this, you know, nice open BLOSS install uh, and, and it's set up to use two out of 80 cores. Um, you know, so, so they've got this fantastic machine and they're using like, you know, a 1 40th of it, uh, you know, when they think they're running full out. So, this sort of stuff frustrates me. Um, I'm not a, a systems guy um, until I need to be, uh, and usually it's sort of by uh, uh, necessity rather than choice. Um, so I, I kind of looked around at this stuff. I had a chance to sort of bounce around eBay and work on projects I wanted for you know a few months at a time. So one of the things I picked up was, hey, you know maybe I could kind of take a stab at solving this problem. Uh, so basically, this is what I did. Um, so, so here's what this actually is now that you know why I wanted it. Um, so Krylov's like a, a, an on-demand high performance compute. Um, you know, we have a lot of central machines. eBay has a big OpenStack install. It doesn't necessarily need to be OpenStack. You know, it could be AWS. It could be anything you like. Um, so I, I kind of poked around at some stuff and, and really just ended up gluing a lot of things together. Um, I like Mesos uh, for a couple reasons I'll, I'll maybe get into in a second. Um, you know, you need some sort of persistent storage. We have HDFS and uh, Swift. Swift, if you don't know, it's like S3. Um, you know, after that, it, it just so happened this, when I started sort of working on this, it's like, hey, look at these guys doing this really nice container stuff. Um, you know, we have the ability through our OpenStack stuff to launch a lot of VMs, uh, but one of my requirements for this was to, to be able to run like native, uh, native GPUs and things like that. Uh, and unless you're using a very specific version of like Zen and a very specific version of NVIDIA card, it's just not possible to pass these through. Um, also, I don't know if you've seen some stuff out of uh, IBM recently where they're comparing performance of, you know, kind of Linux containers or Docker and uh, like KVM and, and right, and you're losing just right off the bat like 30% of your flops. So, um, you know, that's, that's a pretty big uh, problem for me. So, um, you know, I, I kind of started looking at this and saying like, okay, you know, I, I can launch stuff on a Mesos cluster, right? And even with something like, uh, if you're not familiar, there's something like Marathon, which even provides this nice REST API. But I, I've kind of identified like three, kind of three levels of usage that, uh, uh, you know, people tend to go at. 
and, and I think I, I'm doing the first two pretty well which I'll tell you about and the third one I, I'm not getting it all. So let me start with the third one because I think that's kind of the holy grail of where the H2O guys would like to go as well is I want to come along, maybe I'm an analyst, uh, you know I'm in marketing, I'm in the business and, and I really just want to kind of say like here's a data set, um, here's the thing I want to learn about, right, just go and do it for me. Right, maybe build some models, compare them against each other, maybe build me an ensemble. Like, I don't want to know how you do it. Uh, I don't care about the, the sausage. Like, just give me the, how the sausage is made. Just, just give me the, the full product at the end. Um, I, I don't think we're there yet. I, I think that's kind of the, the, the dream uh, and what I'd like to, to see out of uh, H2O and what I'm working on someday. Um, but, but that's kind of not there yet. So, so what I think we, we can do well right now um, is kind of the level two, which is, uh, I want H2O or I want, you know, uh, uh, Spark or I want, uh, you know, a container with uh, SciPy and NumPy or R or Octave or, or whatever you like. I don't want to know how you configured it, right? Like I just want to make sure that it's good. Like don't tell me which version of Blast you're using, just use the best one. Like don't tell me if you're using a GPU. If it's a applicable, just use the GPU. So we can do that really well uh, and I'll show it to you in a second with the demo. Um, and then kind of the lowest level which is really uh, you know kind of where I built this as well is at the very very lowest level um, this is the like I don't trust that you installed this stuff correctly like let me do it. Um, and that's kind of me uh, you know like it, I think if somebody had come to me with uh, as much as I love H2O right now if somebody had come to me and said like hey this is really amazing you should use this like my response would probably be like eh probably not because um, I'm just a very contrary person. Um, but you know, so I want to support that use case too. So you know, at the end of the day, if if you can essentially package something into like a container, like a Docker image or something like that, we can launch it for you. We'll figure out the machines to do it. So that's kind of the the floor for me is I don't ever want to be in the business of provisioning machines. Like I just want to tell you to run this thing and you go and run it. So Mesos is super good at this, um, and there's a lot of ways to do this. So the kind of thing we settled on or, or I settled on was this sort of Mesos framework with a kind of a nice front end on it. Uh, you come along and say tell me the resources you want um, and if it's something like H2O uh, I wrote a Mesos framework that will smartly split it and find the, the available slots in the cluster for you. Um, if it's your own container you know we'll launch it or we'll launch two of them or something and you're kind of on the hook for your own networking. Um, and then kind of to interface with a lot of this stuff I, I figured we can actually launch them kind of simultaneously with these like IPython or Jupyter, you know, Jupyter notebooks um, which give you the, the sort of way to talk if you don't want to go through the normal uh, uh, web interface. Uh, so uh, having said all that, uh, this is kind of the picture which explains what I was saying. So the, the, the end goal here of course is to have this thing you know that you can run off the command line, that you can use our interface, you could you know access it programmatically. But this is just kind of the basic layout and maybe that's hard to see. You know in the very back you've got this, I don't know if you can see the cursor, you've got a Mesos cluster. Um, talking to Mesos cluster it turns out is not super fun. Um, so we're sitting something in front of it called Marathon which provides a, a little nicer way and also manages like long running tasks. Um, you know then I've got sort of this front end application which is basically in Node uh, or uh, PayPal's open source Node uh, thing called Kraken. That guy is taking care of you know the actual uh, negotiating of resources and launching things and tailing you back to the user like giving you this kind of opaque ID so you can talk to, to your resources. Um, and then of course you know since I work in this company where you know nominally at some day we want to sort of manage you know account for all this usage um, you know there's kind of some user tracking as well. I know that you use you know this many CPU seconds and this much RAM across a certain amount of time. Um, you know maybe someday we'll bill your business unit. And uh, the, at the end of the day, you know, my sort of supposition is that if we bill you, it's still going to be cheaper than if you had gone out and bought your own machines, right? Because you, they're going to sit there idle 90% of the time, and you're really only using 10% of my cluster. Um, so, um, in the interest of uh, not talking at you too much, uh, why don't I just show you? And so I'm going to let's see, cross our fingers, and uh, we'll, we'll sort of go to the 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 live demo. Uh, so this is kind of what it looks like. You get to see my, um, you know, fantastic front end design skills. Did I mention I'm a mathematician, not a front end designer? So basically we've got a few things that you can kind of go off by default. You know, we've got H2O, we've got Spark, you can launch your own containers. You know, for internal stuff we've hooked up some own, some data movers to, to zip stuff out of Teradata, stuff like that. Um, but so this is kind of the, the 
what the actual thing looks like. So um, you're seeing kind of the raw thing as well, so uh, hopefully this will work. Um, so you come along and you say, you know, gosh, I would really like to have 128 cores and, you know, let's say 256 gigs of RAM. Uh, you click the button, you can see the cool spin.js. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it, it spins for a minute. Hopefully it comes back. If it doesn't, I actually have one running already that we can look at. Um, I might have asked it for too much. Yeah, I think I asked for too many cores. So let me show you what it should look like. Um, so this is actually going through the Mesos cluster. So what it should look like is this. Um, it's going to come back and say like, hey, uh, in this case, whatever you asked for, uh, I, I couldn't find one slot, like one machine to run this on. If I could have, I would have done it, right? But in this case, we don't have one chunk of cluster that I can actually fit this on. Uh, so I split it in half, right? Uh, if I can't split it in half, I'll split it into three parts as long as they're symmetric. Uh, I'm told by our uh, fine folks at Hexdata that it, it's probably okay. Um, so it'll essentially try and split symmetrically a, as possible and basically walk down the list until it, it hits either, you know, some, uh, something where it fits or there's kind of a lower bound where, hey, it's probably not that good to have like one core and a gig of RAM, uh, you know, split across 256 things. Um, so when you get to there, these guys are just H2O now, um, and I apologize, this is a slightly older version um, because it's, it's essentially a, a Docker container we built. But if you go in here, you can actually see uh, that we actually did split into two nodes. They communicate with each other. So this is some stuff that we worked with uh, Tom on um, to basically come up with, let me go back. So, so kind of what's going on behind the scenes here is, is we worked with Tom to to say like, hey, the, you know, the flat file is kind of cool, um, but what we'd really like to is we're going to do this kind of dynamically. Can we actually just have the thing talk to a zookeeper instance, right? And the zookeeper's got a node where it basically talks up and says, uh, you know, here's the, here's the number of instances you're supposed to have, here's the number of ones that I know of right now, right? And it says we'll keep pulling until it finds that and then it'll push that down and just go through the normal uh, whatever the interface is that actually starts something up on the cluster. The, the advantage here, of course, is that you don't need to tell it how many nodes you need, right? And that's kind of the, the key for me is, is I'm not, you know, I, I, I sort of want to load up our, our cluster as efficiently as possible and maybe sometimes that means finding slots in, in boxes that are already loaded up. And, and since we're actually running inside Docker containers, I'm, I'm reasonably uh, confident about the resource isolation. Like when we say that you're actually getting, you know, X number of CPUs on this machine, you're actually getting X number of CPUs. Nobody's clamping you. Nobody's uh, sort of using the same CPU. So um, that's the demo that didn't quite work. Let's see if it's still spinning. Yeah, okay. I apologize. You know, let's try it one more time and let's actually, let's drop this guy down for a second. Although I might have poisoned it. I, me, well, so this is a Mesos thing, um, and this is maybe a problem with Mesos that uh, uh, we should, well, we can talk about after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so of course live demo, right, it, it can't possibly work. So, <laughs> but the, the one you see actually came from, you know, just a moment ago. Uh, and in fact this one will, should find this cluster because it actually exists. But so this is normally what it looks like. You know, when you free up your resources, uh, you know, you basically just come back here and you say, hey, I'm done, thanks. Uh, you say delete. It goes away um, and you're back to the start. Um, Actually, the, the sort of newest version of this um, is set to do auto cleanup for you because uh, one of the things that I've kind of noticed is, you know, hey, I really need all of the RAM and all of the cores uh, and I'm going to run it for five minutes and then forget about it and, you know, that sort of doesn't work. So basically you can extend the lease uh, by kind of coming and telling us that really you do need it for a little bit longer. Uh, since we have persistent storage on the bottom, it, it's not so bad if you lose it and then have to restart on another machine uh, depending on what you're doing. So. Um, there's your live demo. Uh, so <coughs> kind of here's where I, I'm going right now. But I think 
the plan was to, to kind of put this out in maybe February ish um, and I have a lot of buy in from eBay which is nice. Um, in the state it's in I, I there's some things I'd like to change. Uh, so right now it, it's a little too tightly coupled together with kind of this uh, front end interface and the, the back end so the first thing I'm doing is sort of decoupling that. Uh, the other thing I, I'd really like is to make it more modular um, so you should really just be able to drop in something and add essentially a new endpoint and say like hey I wanted to run notebooks or I wanted to run you know foo and uh, you don't support that but I, I can add it in pretty easily. Um, another kind of nice thing that's come along in the time that uh, I've been working on this is this uh, Kubernetes which gives kind of a nice uh, um, even if you don't like the the sort of Google Kubernetes the language that they use to talk about pods is actually quite nice uh, and I can see sort of going forward if we, if we sort of target Kubernetes rather than something like Marathon then maybe if you're running Kubernetes and Yarn you know we can do that and you don't even need to worry about something like Mesos. Um, and then sort of the you know the last thing here is the the open source bits. Um, but really that's all I've got for you guys so I figured I'd, I'd leave a little bit of time for questions um, and give you a little time back so there you go. So if you want I can address the so, so Mesos is pessimistic uh, meaning it sort of gives everybody a choice of resources and it holds off on those resources until somebody else gets them. This is a problem if you don't have a timeout. I have a timeout it's just too long on the framework right now. Um, if you, if I think where everybody's going is this sort of more um, at least what everybody thinks Google is doing with this sort of omega scheduler which is a little more optimistic. Like the, the cluster scheduler should be smart enough to realize that this application doesn't actually need all of the resources and I can make offers simultaneously to two different people optimistically uh, and, and not block on the ones that it's missing. But the thing that's nice about Mesos here versus something like Yarn is uh, you know in Mesos what happens is my framework goes to the master and says I need resources like these resources. The, the master essentially gets a hold of all the, the worker nodes in the cluster. They come back and say like oh oh I've got these resources pick me pick me pick me and then there's actually you can have logic in your framework to decide which resources to take which is why I'm able to do something like say look I really need 256 cores and then when it comes back and it turns out nobody can give me that I can then essentially walk down again and say like okay maybe I can take 128 from two places and so on and, and I think this is something that and somebody if they know better could correct me right now but I think something like yarn is not capable of this at the moment. Yeah. Nope. Nobody? All right. Well, thank you.